Today's top story from the perspective of someone who's there. You are looking live. This just in. Not my beat. We got a double barrel, if you will, of topics to discuss with Sam Fortier. We got some football and we got some stadium news. Of course, Sam, the Commander's Beat reporter for the Washington Post. Mr. Fortier, how are you and are you using the headphones that I sent you? I am using the headphones that you sent me, so I'll not be pulled over. And I got to tell you, man, seeing the craziness coming out of Chicago today with the Justin Fields comment, with the D.C. abruptly resigning, it's just like giving me flashbacks to what this team used to be like. And I'm right. like, wow, I'm, t- I'm talking about football in a stadium? That that feels odd. Right. One, God, this call quality is just exceptional. Uh, so just, <laughs> I got to say, I'm going to send you a clip later just so you can hear how clear you are. Uh, two, we actually, so earlier in the show, we did a segment called This, That, and the Other Thing, and we wound up putting the, the bear stuff in that. And yeah, it felt very oddly familiar but also safely distant, which I think is is good. All right, we got a lot to get to and not a lot of time. So first, let's uh, J- J- yes. James James Smith Williams just pulled up uh, and, and honked at me. I'm on the radio with Craig Hoffman right oh, now. Do you, up, yeah, do you what's want up? Say what's something? up, James? How you doing, man? What's up, James? Although you probably can't hear it because this Here, is I'll just in on, Sam's I'll put them on headphones. Quick. Greg, how you doing, man? I'm good. Uh, feeling feeling good. Just talking to Sam. Last time uh, we did a hit with Sam, he put Matt Paris and Ben Standing on. So this is an upgrade. Way better. Yeah, way better. Yeah, definitely yeah. an upgrade. All right, let's make sure nobody gets in trouble here. All right, James, yeah. drive home safely. Thank you. You have a good one. All right, goodbye. <laughs> James Smith Williams, everybody. One day, Sam, we'll just have a very normal phone call. Dude, I'm I'm, I'm bringing guests on this show. I want a booking fee. Oh, I'm the producer of this show now. Sorry, Ant. Anthony, would you like uh, would you like to say anything in response to that comment? I'm just gonna go in my corner and wipe away my tears. All right. Um, <laughs> I think you can talk to Anthony about some of his money because I sure don't have any to give you. Uh, what's up with Deron Payne and his ankle, and why wasn't he practicing? Yeah. So I mean, he he said basically that that he's you know working back, and and he tweaked it there at the end of the game. I think everybody saw him kind of limp off. So I mean, it, it was pretty standard. Uh, to me in terms of athlete talks about injury in, in locker room after the game. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, do you think there's any real fear that he misses Sunday? Um, or is this a, hey, it's Wednesday, let's let's be safe here, and he'll be fine by the weekend? Yeah, I think that they're optimistic, but it's, it's you know, sometimes tough to tell. With Terry McLaurin, it was, hey, you know, we're a little pessimistic. And then, you know, same thing with Chase Young. We think he's going to come back in week three, and then he comes back in week two. So um, parsing through what is gamesmanship and, and what is, uh, you know, what is real, you know, is, is sometimes tough. But I, I think that uh, if, De- if Deron Payne has anything to say about it, he'll be out there on Sunday. Uh, Sam Fortier, Washington Post, with us here on the Hoffman Show. So this Bills team is a way bigger test than either of their first two opponents, with all due respect to their first two opponents. For me, the area where it could go the most sideways for Washington is trying to protect Sam Howell slash Sam Howell protecting himself. What did Sam have to say about his continued improvement and you know the matchup with this very, very good Buffalo defensive line this weekend? I mean, everybody in the building is talking about this as a measuring stick game. You know, everybody knows, uh, you know, what Arizona and Denver are and are expected to be. So with Sam Howell, I think it's, you know, taking care of the ball, not taking any big hits. Obviously, there have been a couple big hits in the first two games, the, the one on Logan last week and the one on Sam as he was getting out of bounds in the opener. So, I mean, those are definitely things that people are aware of. And, and Sam against this, this Bills defensive line, he said, like, you know, where, where I think the quote was something like, wherever you look, there's a good player on this defense. So is he going to test the, the Bills' safeties, you know, going deep in the same way that he felt comfortable with, with the Broncos' safeties on that 30-yard dot to Terry? Like, you know, I, Justin Simmons is a very good player, and I think that, you know, the Broncos had a good secondary, but, um, you know, is he going to be comfortable doing the same thing? Uh, today on the practice field, I heard Tavita Pritchard telling him, you know, hey, don't get bored with the, with the check down. Don't get bored with the swing pass. Like, uh, I think that's going to be a pretty big key if they want to take care of the ball and, and stay in the game against what is obviously one of the biggest explosive offenses in the league right now. No doubt about it. Uh, in terms of the balance, like, can they survive – with the kind of ratio they had in the first half for that long in a game, 33 dropbacks to seven rushing attempts in the first 40 plays. Um, I know some of those were RPOs that Sam probably could have handed off and probably should have handed off. So it's it's not quite that skew in terms of uh, in terms of the calls just being straight run or straight pass. But 
that's what the ratio wound up being. And obviously they scored more when they got more balanced in the second half. So uh, especially again with this D line coming up, like what what's kind of the talk around the play calling and the use of the screen game and the running game and all these things that can get the ball out of Sam's hands a little faster. I don't think that Eric Bieniemy philosophically would like to be 33 past a seven run. I think that was a function of being down 21 to three in the same way that, you know, last year the commanders got in a pretty big hole in, in I think it was two of their first three games again and, and had to throw the ball a ton. And obviously like that wasn't the best way to call that offense either. So I, I think that Eric Bieniemy would like to be balanced, you know, and, and I think the defense is, are playing the commanders a little bit differently now because Sam Howell has the arm strength that Taylor Heineke didn't, and he's willing to throw it down the field. So I think you're going to see lighter boxes and, and especially, you know, if you can get a defense to respect you deep, you know, then you can say, Hey, Brian Robinson, Hey, Antonio Gibson, here's a handoff. Like let's get some explosive plays in the run game. They had 11 explosive plays last week, which um, was tied for the most that they had had second most that they had had going back to, 2020 so I mean this offense like it was working it's obviously not the way they want to get to it or be forced into that but I think that Eric Bieniemy's play calling and his selection of the screen game uh, he was he was pressing the right buttons last Sunday and I think that they'd be fine doing that again if they weren't forced to pass it so much uh the last thing I want to football ask you about before we get to the RFK stuff today on Capitol Hill uh, is Sam Fortier is our guest here on the Hoffman show is the use of the running backs uh versus each other if you will I was stunned when I looked at the snap counts yesterday and saw that Antonio Gibson played almost the same number of snaps as Brian Robinson. It was 38, 35 because the carries were 18 to two. Like, what do you make of that usage package? And and how do you think that continues to evolve uh, as, as hopefully Antonio Gibson regains some trust from EB and Ron Rivera after that week one fumble? Uh, to me, it's it's a function of their skill sets and how they view them in this offense, and then the, the score and the situation. Like they were down twenty-one to three, so they were throwing the ball more. And when you're throwing the ball more, you're going to have AG and more. And so I, I see it as as simple as that. And obviously, there are times where each of them can do the other thing, where Antonio can get the handoff, or, or you know Brian Robinson can take the screen a long way, like he did. Um, but I, I don't think that this is um, indicative of. You know, obviously they want Antonio to hold on to the ball, but I don't see this as indicative of punishment or or anything like that. All right, Sam Fortier with us, not only covering the football team out in Ashburn, but he has been all over along with his Washington Post colleagues. Uh, The latest movement when it comes to the commander's desire to return to RFK. There is a significant happening in that department today. Fill us in on what happened. So basically uh, the House Oversight Committee, which has jurisdiction over D.C., was considering a bill that would extend the lease of, you know, from the federal government to D.C. Uh, at RFK for 99 years, and it would lift a bunch of restrictions on usage so uh, they, could, they could put more there than just you know, recreation and, and sports stadiums. It would create a mixed-use development that the team, would, the team would be interested in if they were to go back to RFK. So basically today, uh, man, it was surprising because a lot of ideologically different people were making alliance enemies, we're hugging. Friends were going after each other. Um, you know, Jamie Raskin uh, from Maryland, who's been a big advocate for D.C. statehood, you know, started to say, oh, I actually support an amendment that was introduced by a Republican from Pennsylvania, Scott Perry, that said, oh, D.C. can have the land, but there's got to be restrictions that they can't use any of any public funds for a stadium. And then you had James Comer, the Republican from Kentucky, who has, you know, interfered with D.C. And, and said, oh, like, we don't like your crime bill and, and, you know, been really spearheading some of those efforts, saying, oh, no, we actually do want D.C. to have autonomy here. We want them to be able to put a stadium because that's what Mayor Bowser wants. So it was a very bizarre day. The amendment ended up failing 13 to 24, uh, and the bill uh, passed 31 to 19, or, or it was advanced, I should say. Um, it'll be considered by the full House later this year. Um, so it's, it's a significant step for legislation that would be needed to pass both houses um, or, or both chambers, I should say, of Congress to get the team back to RFK. So I, I, it's a significant step, but there's still a long way to go. Is, is that rambly enough for you? Um, yeah, no, that was perfect. Uh, I think you captured a lot of important things there. The list of the list of uh, Congress people on the various sides of this was hilarious and i don't want to start making a lot of commentary on that because i you know it's inherently political and people get upset but like let's just say whether you like 
far right, far left, your favorite congressperson could have been on the same side of this bill, and there seems to be no through line as to why. Um, as for kind of that long-term prognosis, if we if we zoom out all the way, Sam, like what is the chances uh, that it passes the full House? And as you mentioned, it's got to pass the Senate as well. Like, is there actually enough momentum, support, backing, whatever, to get the commanders back to RFK? Or is this ultimately, you think, going to be uh, a long, a lot of work put in for a pipe dream and Virginia's going to offer a billion dollars and it's just going to go there or whatever Westmore can can conjure up in Maryland? I mean, that's a, it's a difficult question because we don't know yet. I think that you should, if you're the commanders and if you're their lobbyists, like you should feel pretty confident that it'll pass the House because the day before the bill was added, I think 12 new members were added as co-sponsors so now you've got you've got eight um republicans and and four democrats joining that bill including you know some pretty powerful players so i I think that you're still optimistic that it'll pass the house but if it doesn't come out of the house um with momentum does it get through the senate and then also like if the government shuts down are you going to have enough floor time to get this through by the end of the year and then you know all sorts of things could happen so there's a lot of uncertainty but at least in the house this was, a, a, I think, a speed bump into what they expect to still uh, be a successful uh, push. Got it. Uh, and, of course, you guys will have more on that soon. WashingtonPost.com slash sports. Sam 48 with us here on the Hoffman Show, bringing special guests as usual. Thanks, buddy. And, by the way, I'll see you tomorrow in Ashburn. Of course. Oh, well, see you tomorrow, man. Uh, you can talk to James yourself. I will. I will. All right. Thanks. See ya. See ya. Bye. That's Sam Fortier uh, and James Smith-Williams with us here on the Hoffman Show. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.